just kidding. I wish it was that candid. I thought I would do a, that was a really lame joke. Maybe we should start again. Take two. I thought I would do a video today going through my career in tech thus far from someone who didn't go to school for computer science or really anything that technical, going into starting as a quality assurance analyst, then moving very quickly to a software developer, staying a software developer, senior developer, leading a team of developers for just under five years and now to a developer advocate. I wanted to share with you my journey, how I base my career decisions, uh, how I decide what is the next best step for me to take, how I calculate what I'm going to do with my path moving forward, and all of that. Okay, let's get started. If this isn't your first video, you know what the next thing is that we need to do in order to continue this conversation, which is really the main thing you need to do when you work in tech. We need to go get some more coffee. Let's go, come on. Got the coffee, but it's too hard to film and carry coffee. So I'm gonna leave it in the car while I film this for a little bit here. Oh, gotta lock it, that is important. There we go. Okay, so I thought I'd come by the beach to do this talk because I mean, what's more beautiful? Like, look at this. That's really beautiful and peaceful. Uh, but back to the story. So I started actually out in QA, quality assurance, because it was working for a company that I really wanted to work for. It was a startup in Toronto, and I knew there was a lot of opportunity for growth. And a question I get asked often around that is, well, when you started as a QA, did you tell them up front that you wanted to be a developer? And the answer to that is, honestly, I didn't. And I think it's, a, looking back, I would have, because I think it's super important to be transparent. But at the time, I was just kind of taking things day by day as they came my way. I didn't know what life or my career had in store. I knew I was still learning how to code. I knew I wanted to be a software developer, but I was still kind of just figuring it out as I went. So started out in quality assurance, was doing that for, I didn't do it for very long because I knew I wanted to do software development. So I did that for about, four to five months, I would say. And during that time, I get asked, another question I get asked often is, well, how did you transition into software development? And what I did is, and I give this advice to anyone who wants to make that transition, is simply you have to take initiative. No one is going to hold your hand throughout your career. You have to take initiative. You have to be your biggest cheerleader so often, even though it is a lot of times uncomfortable. So what I simply started doing was picking up little defects and bugs that uh, the developers were working on. I developed a relationship with the developers at the time and said, hey, can I pick up these small defects, small bugs? I think I found a solution for some of them and started just taking initiative, showing that I'm not only interested, but I actually am taking the steps towards becoming a developer. And look at this, I can solve these problems. I can solve these defects. And I mean, I still had a long way to go, but I was so determined and just completely let my ego go in the sense that maybe sometimes I was asking really silly questions. Maybe sometimes I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I just kept on pushing forward knowing that it would lead to something great. And that's one of my biggest pieces of advice that I would give to you if you are looking to break into tech or if you're already into tech and wanna take the next step in your career is let go of your ego, as I mentioned earlier, and be your own biggest cheerleader. There will be times in your career where people will really have your back and truly believe in you and, and want you to get to the next step. But unless you are taking the steps to get to that next step, to get to whatever it is you are going after on your own, people aren't going to do it for you. That's the reality. You need to take initiative and do it. So from there, I started out doing backend. I was focusing on Node and Express and I absolutely loved it. I mean, it was so challenging, but I knew it was exactly what I wanted to do. And I, I love backend development, building different APIs, uh, working with my SQL. It was so much fun. It was a really small team and it was exactly what I needed to do. And that's another thing too. If you are looking to really learn a lot, grow a lot, working with people that you can trust and that have your back is so important as well. And that's something you can tell even from the interviews is 
How do these people react to who you are? When you ask questions, what is their response? Do they take time to actually engage with you? Do they care about you and your growth? And that's really important as well when you are thinking about your next step. So I started on back in development, did that for a while, for a few years, and the startup scene was amazing. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed having a vision and building together. But as someone who had never worked at a big company at that time, I thought, okay, I need to try a big company. So I went to a big company as a software developer, and it was a completely different experience. Both were positive, just different experiences. Okay, we got our coffee, we got a little walk. And then of course, if you've watched my previous video about uh, leaving my current job as a software developer and starting a new job in September, you know I am transitioning into a developer advocate role. And that really came from having done software development for just under five years. I was ready for my next step in my career. And for me, as I mentioned in that video, it was definitely developer advocacy. And how I really got into that role and pursued those kind of interests was I was doing so much of this skill set already with Tiffin Tech that it just made sense. And I had those skill sets already existing very strongly, was doing a lot of that. So I was like, wow, this is exactly what I want to do. And, and I transitioned into that. And once again, it was one of those things that no one was holding my hand to do it. No one was gonna, you know, push me along. You have to do it on your own. You have to be your biggest cheerleader and truly believe in yourself. Even when people are questioning you or wondering what the heck you are doing, just believe that will work out and get comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's the only way you are going to grow. And I know I say this a lot, but it, cause it's so true. You need to put yourself in these uncomfortable situations, not situations that are negatively uncomfortable, but situations where it, you can feel it means you are growing. And I think that's so important to always be growing and evolving. And no, you don't have to, you can stay a software developer. You're entire career path and have a great career. You don't need to do the promotions or uh, grow in roles. You can stay the same and grow, you know, senior and et cetera. And it really depends on what you want to do in your career. But my biggest thing, my biggest takeaway from all this would be to be open. Be open to new opportunities that come your way. Be open to different roles that you might have not heard about. Be open to changing your career path because if you have it so set in stone that you aren't willing to take some steps outside of the path that you have planned for yourself. A, it's not gonna be fun, it's gonna be kind of boring, and B, who knows the opportunities that you are missing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit more about how I transitioned from QA, software developer, senior developer, dev lead, to now developer advocate, and I hope if you take anything away from this video, it is that as I just summed up, constantly be growing, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Even if you're uncomfortable with being uncomfortable, just put yourself in that and just small steps. It doesn't have to happen overnight. And you've got this. You are capable of more than you think you are. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech coding related content and I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.